Well, hello everyone. Welcome to my video for the Theo Kellison Makers Challenge. Hopefully you've been following along. This is Tuesday. Um, so far, there's been four other creators that have put up videos. There's two creators each day that have been invited on this challenge. Fourteen total. So these are all different places on the planet, different materials, different type of projects that are going to be tried. Please check everybody out. Each one of these videos is going to be an individual little treasure of its own. And it's a chance to, to meet a bunch of different creators, find a bunch of different channels. Theo has put a lot of effort into this. All the different makers have put a lot of effort into it. So take a little wander through the options and variety. On Sunday, Agate Enchantment and Rock Wizardry and Katie Did Rock started the whole thing off for us. Monday was Gravel Bar Hopper and Montana Rock Mom. Tuesday, today, currently rock hounding and myself, quest for details. Wednesday, Mam Lambo and World of Rock Hounds. Thursday, Agate Dad and Rock Hounding Life. Friday, Michigan Rocks and Marlena Atkins. And Saturday, Rookie Rock Hounding, and the man who put this all together himself, Theo Kellison. Okay, thank you Theo for inviting me uh, on this challenge. What I think that I'm going to do is take out some of my rainbow obsidian that I got from the Davis Creek area last year. And um, see if I can make maybe a cabajon or a tower. I actually haven't done a whole lot of rock crafting in my life. I'm more of a hunter and a finder. I've mostly done carving just with dremels and that type of thing, more inscribing, etching into, and I wanted to go a little bit out of my comfort zone. And so this challenge seems like the perfect thing to make me dig into some of my good stock, things that could sit there for, you know, like a decade and you're almost afraid to touch it because your skill level isn't where you want it to be or whatever. You haven't decided what to do with it. Procrastination and stalling. And so, yeah, I'm going to go dig into my pile and um, let's get started. I don't have the best equipment, but I think that um, it's good for all of us to show that we're just working with what we have and what you can afford. And uh, yeah, so let's, uh, let's go grab the rocks. Okay. I think this is the piece I'm going to start with. It's got a lot of rainbow play to it already. We're going to cut kind of diagonal through the whole thing in a slight fancy cut diagonal. Try and slice down through this whole thing like that. Uh, at a slight angle, get some slabs out of there. And not sure if I'm gonna try and nap a knife out of it. I'm not uh, the world's best aerosmith or anything. Or try and just make a simple cab. Yeah, definitely. We'll just start by slicing this open and see what kind of stock we have. So this is a tool that I have to work with. Is uh, the tile saw that me and my dad used to use in uh, construction and stuff. So. Um, run with what you got. So I'm going to slice this up. I need to have some sort of flat surface when I'm cutting the rest of the slabs. So we'll start by just slicing the rough face off of it. That'll be our smooth surface that can sit down against the table and plus we'll be able to get a glimpse inside the stone to see what kind of color play we have going on. The 
layers in this obsidian really dictate which color plate is going to be on the surface. What I've learned is that cutting diagonally across them in as long of a cut as you can gives you the most exposure to the color that you can get. So we have this now at the correct angle that if we take slabs out of it that they will have that that angle and the color will be revealed instead of just see-through or black. I am repeatedly having breaking problems at this point, but we are down to the color that I, I definitely want. So this next slab I feel will be super important to get out of here unbroken. It keeps fracturing right at its natural separation points in between the different plies of, of color in the stone itself. So I feel that moving this to where we're taking a slightly thicker slab out of it will give us a, a more stable slice is my goal. So this one almost has a natural arrowhead shape to it as it comes off in a slab. So I decided to just kind of match both sides equally and create a blank that we can start with. This silicate, the obsidian, is actually a very soft stone. It turns out it's a a lot like any uh, cutting of glass or anything, so it's, it's moderate hardness and um, a lot like the softness of Pyrex. So look at the blue in that. I think we can try and map that into something. And this is another thing that saving all copper wire from metal detecting trips is good for because we're actually going to use this to try and nap. <coughs> Take that off there. It actually looks like a pretty good little edge. And then we'll just actually make the wire itself into our gripping tool. I really don't know what possessed me to think that I could nap out an arrowhead or a knife on one of my first tries, but we'll go ahead and watch this and it's always good to try. This, and this is like an old grounding rod wire or something. You see it's pretty thick. I'll double this over on itself. That's going to be... It fits in the butt of my hand. It gives me that little bit of of push. And this is going to be the soft edge that catches on this, hopefully, and takes out my little chunks. Because the big napping is already done by our saw. So we have our preform. And if we blow this, then we can work on the other project. We need to go somewhere where we can leave little glass flakes and uh, nobody will step on them later. And we need our gloves and our glasses 
and something to put over our knee or working surface so we don't bleed to death. Well, I've decided that this surface here is actually a pretty good one to at least start trying this and then we can vacuum it up off of this little carpet, I think. So, do have my safety glasses on and I took up a little wax at it here. Yeah, I am not a pro at all. I've just seen people do this before. I was wondering if it was something that we could pick up and start teaching ourselves without bleeding the whole body. These are those moments on a project when you know that you just might have overbitten a little bit and it's a little bit beyond your skill level, like a lot. So didn't know what I was doing, obviously. The blue rainbow sheen that's coming out of this obsidian at this point is what I wanted to do this for. I, I really desperately want to see this made into some sort of napped out anything because the conchoidal fractures of it look so beautiful especially in blue i can't imagine what an entire napped out surface would look like about an hour later but i won't make you sit through all of that this is where it got into Now that's a bummer. So with only a couple of days left, I went back immediately to the other form that I had in mind, which was a tower. I've been wanting to make minerals into the crystal shape for fun because I think it's one of the most beautiful forms of presentation that you can have in a mineral collection. And um, if you're into the energy of stones, it's a great way of focusing the energy into something that um, already in the natural world has a very powerful shape so 
in a way, in a sense, trying to make minerals into gemstones, which is, I guess, the goal anytime that you're faceting or doing cabbage arms. So, this will be my first attempt at a tower. Obelisk. It's our, uh, it's our little mess from yesterday. Let me clean this up. Okay. It's a real basic setup on this. Where's our spray bottle? This is the only tool that I have really to work with. It's the best thing that I have. Um, I have 400 grit on here and uh, I'm just gonna try and keep everything wet without of course soaking the uh, bushings and stuff in the machine. But I like this carpet too, really helps to, to grip stuff. Well, this sander is, uh, it's not working for me. It's just not doing the job. I think we're going to have to finish this by hand, which we will do. Reality. So we'll just do this. This is the old uh, lap board is what we'll call it. So I don't have a flat lap. This is my version. Ancient version, probably, you know? I guess we could set up like a record player, but we'll just do this because we're making one stone and the hardness of it and the flatness of it will help us stay true to our angles that we developed. That holds more water like that too. Plus you can lighten up in the end and get that ultra fine finish. And it'll do just fine. Okay. Yep. And away we go.
Okay, it is the next day, and I have a blister on my thumb. Might get a blister on your little finger, might get a blister on your thumb. This is where we are at so far. Trying to get these last saw marks out of there. Even it up a little bit, but wait till you see this in the sunlight. It is incredible. I have not got to see this rainbow obsidian yet, except for just in the spots where it was cleaved away when I was fracturing it with the hammer. So, um, really cool gray green in this one. And yeah, fun little, fun little way to keep your, your specimens. So, that's the goal of today, is sand and sand and sand and then switch it. Skipping ahead a little bit, I sanded and sanded and sanded and sanded, used my finest grit paper that I have with me at this time. Um, I've watched some more videos now. I can see that obsidian, being very soft and easy to work with, is also really hard and tricky to get beyond the flat luster level to that shiny glass state, which is... Mm -hmm. Strange to me because I would think that glass would be glassy, but turns out that I will have to look into buffing compounds and and things that I have not yet embraced as, as a rock hound or a rock maker. This form is my most complicated rock form that I have ever tried to make. Uh, like all things, it seems simple when you try and get the symmetry right. Uh, it becomes complicated, and believe me, the symmetry on this is, is not truly, you know, balanced, but close enough to the point where I think it achieves its goal of being, you know, a, a quality gemstone piece at this point. It feels so good in the hand. I love the way it goes through its three phases of, of like, dark black hold up to the light to reveal that it's gem grade, gem quality obsidian, just very few flaws, and the flaws are beautiful inclusions. And then of course, it's rainbow sheen, it's, it's dynamic, and this particular slab picked up more of the, the green spectrum, the gray green spectrum, as opposed to the arrowhead which was more of the blue spectrum. So as you go down in the rock itself, it's like they're in layers. Tiny pebble of something trapped inside. But overall, I focused on trying to get the flaws out of it, get it down to, to just one uniform surface, um, as many of the flaws out of it as I could. When I realized I wouldn't be able to get the shine that I wanted, um, I decided that I'd have to show you with water on it. We'll do water first, and then we'll do some oil on it. And this is this is probably what it'll look like when I can figure out how to buff it down to a finer shine. Um, sandpaper doesn't seem to be the answer for this type of glass. You need to go beyond sandpaper to actually shining, but I think we can because it's silicate. You can see the green fire and flames in this, and if we can get that shine eventually, it'll be even more stunning because you won't have to present it with any sort of moisture to it. Already, in just regular lamplight inside, for some reason, it illuminates better, but as far as direct sunlight, to make it super obvious and not have to search for the sheen super hard you still have to moisten it a little bit i have a little just a dapple of mineral oil on it in these shots you can see it wanting to change 
from its green-gray fire flames to its see-through self. These shots now are inside underneath just a regular true sun fluorescent light. This was good. This was good. I learned a lot just in one thing because instead of doing something that was totally what I'd done before, I decided to do something I've always wanted to do and kind of stuck with the, the challenge part of it. And uh, it was challenging. Um, I think it was good to show you know how complicated it can be, how many setbacks there are. Okay, that's going to end my little part of this challenge. Um, as you can see, it was a challenge. So, thank you for bearing with me to this point, and thank you, Theo, for inviting me along on this and giving us all the fun reason to start off our spring rock hunting season and join together and meet each other, and for the audience to get a chance to mingle amongst all of these channels and. Um, these are the channels that have been up. It started on Sunday. It will be continuing until Saturday. And um, be sure to check everybody out. There's two different creators each day from a different part of the world doing a different project. So this really, this is a fun thing to check out. And uh, okay, until next time, I will see you out there. Quest on.